We continue in the 19th letter, a mystical one that left us on the edge of the seat yesterday. I'm trying to uh, understand, or well, we didn't try to understand. We just, now that I posed the question, we understand from the Arizal's teachings that Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, was only able to apprehend what we call Acharaim, the backside of the divine, meaning the external, backside meaning external, excuse me, meaning external aspects of the divine wisdom. And only when it came to the Nehim, Netzachoy, Yisoyed Malkus, the lower levels in the divine order of things, did Moshe Rabbeinu, did Moses have a um, internal or inward understanding of it? Or I, I don't understand it, but an inward connection to it. Yet, the mystics, including the Arizal and other great mystics, they actually apprehended much greater, much, much greater aspects of the divine, including divine wisdom, including uh, beyond that, Kesser and, and beyond, they were able to um, to apprehend. So how is it possible that Moshe Rabbeinu, is the greatest prophet of all times, would not be able to app to apprehend that which the mystics did? So the answer, the alternative says, is actually plain and clear to all. Well, what's the difference between the apprehension the apprehension of Kabbalists, like Rav Shimon Bar Yochai, the Rashbi, like the Arizal, Rav Isaac Luria, is that their apprehension is through wisdom and knowledge, it's through the mind, as opposed to Moshe Rabbeinu and the prophets is prophetic, of what we call it, vision. As the Torah actually calls it vision, right? And what does vision mean? When you see something, you're grasping the essence of the thing. As opposed to when you hear something, you're apprehending merely the existence of it. You're grasping its externality. Right? You're, com you're, 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 not, you're comprehending something of it, but not it. As opposed to when you see something, you're seeing it. Right? So you get the essence. And then, with this then, we can understand what we said yesterday. The God said, you will not see my back. He didn't say, hear my back, see my back. Because we see that idea of seeing comes together with a prophet. As the prophet Isaiah said, I saw God. Right? Or Abraham, that God appeared to me. Now, seeing here is, of course, in a metaphor, because it doesn't mean actually seeing with the physical, fleshy eye. But nonetheless, the analog needs to resemble the analogy. And in fact, that's, as the Targum Unculus translates, when it comes to Vayera, when Moshe Rabbeinu, what does it mean? That he, that he's, he was Vayar Elav Hashem, and he made him appear himself, Hashem, to, to Abraham. So, as the translation is, God became revealed. So seeing means something is in a manifest state, taken out of its hiddenness. And God became revealed to Abraham, or, for that matter, all of the prophets. All of the prophets, right? Now, of course, we know that seeing is quite different than hearing. Hearing is a inferior perception, less tangible impression than seeing. Right, we understand that. So therefore, it's different when it comes to the capitalists. They didn't see the divine levels. They apprehended with their mind. They heard, as it were, right? That it was previously hidden and it became revealed to them but they 
rather hear merely as opposed to see as the prophet. Therefore, interesting, our sages say that in the Talmud, that a wise man is superior to a prophet. Hmm. Because through wisdom, uh, you can apprehend levels of divinity that are far higher than those that can descend to be revealed to the prophet in his prophetic vision. Because Now, just to give a very simple metaphor, when you see devastation, for example, right, of course it makes much more of an impact, but sometimes seeing such devastation, like by way of example, I'm just giving this by way of example, like Holocaust images, you can't bear to see it. It's too much. You, you close your eyes, you cover your eyes, right? So that's what happens, with, by way of metaphor, for the prophet. Those sublime levels, you got to cover up your eyes. Like the sun is so shining, so strong, so bright. You got to cover up your eyes because it's too much. But if someone were to tell you about the Holocaust, not that you see it, but they describe it and explain it to you. So you don't need to cover up your eyes now, right? It's not as painful, of course. So that's the idea then, that hearing an idea, you can tolerate much more. And therefore you can apprehend deeper Right, so you what you can go deeper. And that's why also in apprehension, you know, you see something and then with your mind you try to dig deeper into understanding that which maybe you saw. So that's why the wise sage is superior to the prophet, because through their mind, um, their wisdom, they can apprehend much deeper levels in divinity that could not be uh, revealed to the prophet. It's too much of a light, can't see it. But you could hear it and appreciate and understand it. So that's just a way for me to explain it. The altar of it didn't give that kind of metaphor with the sunlight or whatever. Um, but now to understand that, let's further as the altar of it explains in Kabbalistic terminology that the lowest levels of Netzach HaYisoy de Malkus, their lower levels of the divine revelation or of the divine order of things, so that could descend and become revealed from the emanator to the recipient I can be revealed to them. So those things, um, the prophet has an actual revelation, meaning perception, right, seeing, godliness, not in the eye, flesh of the eye, right, and but within that which they are able to perceive, as we mentioned, Nihim, the Netzach HaYisoy Malchus, the lower levels of the divine order of things, vested in that, right, is, of course, the, the is Bina, divine understanding, divine Chochmah, Right? But that's vested in it is only the external aspect, which those levels transcend the conception and comprehension of the divine. Right? In, in, in just like in a, in a human being, you know, in, in your act of um, enduring or 
having acknowledgement, right? Those are emotional lower levels of uh, of um, lower levels of emotions vested in it is intelligence. There's intelligence there. Now that intelligence that's there is the external aspect of the intelligence of Chochmah Bina, of the divine, right? Or in the human being, by way of metaphor, it's the external. In other words, the external, the way it, uh, something is not for itself, but the way it invests itself, the way it is relating or draws into, like his intelligence draws into emotions, right? Now, on the divine order of things, so now, the Torah itself, it is derived from Chachma. Meaning that the reasons of the, uh, which is supernal wisdom, the reasons for the commandments have not been revealed in rational terms. They transcend the conception and comprehension. And hence, it's Chachma, right? In other words, in the innermost core um, of Torah, it's a transcendent of of rationality, right? Now, that's not just in the Torah itself, but even in every aspect of what God revealed to the prophets, and it's recorded in the Torah, like in Tanakh, right? like from any of the prophets, whether they the prophet is giving admonishing the people, or it's a narrative of an incident. So we often take it just as a historical, um, um, you know, account. But no, it's not. It's not just history. It's an eternal message for all generations. Vested in those words of the prophet, which I remember, which is prophecy is a revelation of the lower levels of divine of Nehim. That's a Chayi Yisrael Malchus of divine order but vested in it in even in the rebuke and the narrative is divine wisdom that transcends comprehension now this idea is the other shows that we see that in the torah itself but there's something called kri exiv the way we read something and the way it's written the way we read it is different than the some words or there are several words in the torah that we read it one way but it's actually written differently. And the way we read it makes sense because that's reading. I mean, the, the way we uh, way we read something is the way we hear it, right? So the way we hear it is understanding. We need to have understanding. I hear you. I understand you. So... Um, so that's a, that that the way it's read, it's understood the verse. The way it's written, though, it's actually not understood. The way the word is written in the in the Torah scroll, it's written differently than the way it's read. That indicates to us that that's what we see. What we see in the word, again, not the way it's read, we, we the way we hear it, the way it's seen, is beyond comprehension, because it doesn't make sense the way that the word is written. An example just to, to give you is know the Lord is God. He has made us loyanachnu, his people and his sheep and his pasture. So loyanachnu means is spelt with is is read with an aleph. No, we didn't make ourselves, but it's written with a vav. Loy anachtu to him is us. We are to him. Doesn't. Why is that? It's because there's so many things to be learned to out in in, in 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 Jewish law and in lessons and messages that the Torah is teaching us. So that's why there is a distinction. The point over here is that. The Torah is alluding to the fact that there's something, the way it's seen, the way it's written, 
is beyond comprehension. Likewise, we have large letters in the Torah, right? That um, that they derive from the sublime wor world of Bina, that radiate openly, so to speak, without a garment. They're not regular sized letters. Again, showing us that there's something beyond what we can comprehend in Torah. And that's the middle of a thought that we leave it, because we're going to go further with that to appreciate what and, and what we're going with this is to appreciate that in Torah there's two components. There's the and the metaphor that in the verse that we started at the very beginning is that God wraps himself, his light, with a garment. So God has a light and he has a garment, metaphorically. What we're going to see is what Moshe Rabbeinu gave us was a garment, and, and wrapped in it is a light. The garment is something you could see, which is prophecy, which is something that we can um, also see in the sense the do's and the don'ts, versus a light that is deeper, more profound, that's wrapped in there, that you can't see it in action. You can't see it, but you can understand it and go deeper to understand the light. I sort of just gave a parameter where we're going. I know that that was probably a bit mystical for you, what I just said. That's okay. <laughs> you'll, uh, you'll get it, uh, God willing. Tomorrow we'll continue. Any questions, any comments? I don't see any. So you know what we're doing? We're going to go to Rambam in a few moments. Oh, I see a question from Davida. And then John. When we recite the Shema, do we say here because we are on a lower level than the prophet that can see? Yeah, so, good question, excellent. In the Shema, we say, hear, O Israel, or hear, Israel. Um, so, in other words, we, because we're in a meditative state. Prayer is about meditation, right? Or, I mean, a part of prayer is meditation. Um, feeling it in the heart. So it's about using the mind to contemplate. That's mind contemplating is not seeing is hearing so here israel god is the lord uh, is god god is one yeah so it's, it's to bring into that meditative state ultimately that you that godliness should be very real for you though like seeing um thank you good question thank you davida john how did the kabbalists understand the secrets they received from supernal chachma uh, well we're gonna get there good question john where well, we're gonna you know get a kabbalistic perspective yes there will be a, uh, a class on sunday folks there won't be a class on monday and tuesday because it's rosh hashanah and on wednesday we're gonna have a triple header sort of like double header uh, Davida, what is the class schedule? Yeah, so um, so Wednesday, regular schedule. Um, Thursday and Friday and Sunday after that. I will have to figure out exactly because my schedule is a bit different. Okay. Okay, folks, uh, I have to run right now. Um, I'm Rabbi Rami Fine coming to you from Chabad Zuch and Kadesh in Montreal, Canada. It's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you, Tanya. Thank you for joining. Have a wonderful day.